There was a fella that moved to our part of the country one time. He's a Yankee fella from up around Atlanta. As far as we was concerned, anything north of Macon, you was suspect of being either a carpetbagger or a bluebelly, one or the other. We weren't never too sure about that. Well, this Benton fella come down there, and he just wandered around for a few days, and he was telling everybody how he was going to be a farmer. He finally decided it was time for him to be a real South Georgia dirt farmer, so he went down to the Rainbow Filling Station garage and grocery store, and he was talking to Mr. Bass Ferguson. And he and Mr. Bass talked for a little while, and he said, Mr. Bass, he said, what do I need to be a part of this community? He said, I really want to farm here. What do I have to buy to get into this community and start farming? Well, Bass thought about it for a minute. He said, well, said you're going to need a gee whiz. You're going to need a breaking plow. You're going to need a ground scratcher. You're going to need you a stone boat, hoe, axe, freight. And uh, if you want to be a shown up South Georgia farmer, you've got to get you one of them big red Georgia mules. So that Benton fella says, uh, well, Mr. Bass, where can I get me one of them mules? How do I grow one? Bass Ferguson looked him right in the eye and says, well, you've got to get you a mule egg or two and raise them for babies. <laughs> and Benton says, well, where do I get me a mule egg? And Bass said, I ain't got any left. I sent all mine over to the egg man in Savannah. <laughs> said, but you go on over to old Chicken Watson's place that he just might have one or two mule eggs left. So Benton said, thank you very much. And he got in his new pickup truck and he drove over to Chicken's place. And Bass Ferguson ran in the house and called Chicken on the phone, told him what he'd done. Well, Chicken run out and back and he got himself a, a honeydew melon, one of these great big honeydew melons. <laughs> and he whitewashed it real quick. And he went in the barn where he just put some fresh straw down in a clean stall and he kind of poked it up in a little pile and he sat that whitewashed honeydew melon right in, right in the middle of that pile of straw and he went around the front and sat on the front porch in about five or six minutes while Benton comes up in his pickup truck and he stopped and he blew the horn. Now you just, when you're out in the country, you just don't get out of your truck and storm up on somebody's front porch. You're liable to get shocked. You blow the horn and you sit there and wait. And when they get through with whatever it is they're doing, they'll invite you in. Well, Chicken sat there and looked at him for a minute, and he said, well, come on up. So Benton come in there, and he sat on a porch, and they talked about the weather, and they talked about the, talked about the county fair, and they talked about the railroad moving the trestle, and, and had a nice talk. And finally, Benton decided he better just grab it by the horns. And he said, uh, Mr. Watson, said, Bass Ferguson sent me over here, said he told me that said, you might have a mule egg or two left. And he said, I'm just real interested in starting to farm in this part of the country, and I surely do need me one of them big red Georgia mules. And I'd admire to raise one if you got an egg left that I can buy. Mr. Bass told me you had the finest mule eggs in all of South Georgia. Chicken just sat there and looked at him for a minute, and he said, Mr. Benton, he said, you know, them mule eggs are hard to come by. So we just don't ordinarily let just anybody have a mule egg. Said, them mules of mine are mighty valuable. I got the finest laying mules in all of the South. <laughs> Said, and the laying season is over. And I just, uh, I ain't sure they're going to be anymore. But I'll tell you what, Mr. Benton. Said, I got me one mule egg left, and I'll let you have it for $20 if you give me your word that you'll watch over that egg like a mama mule that you'll take care of it and hatch it and bring that baby mule up right. And that fella said he would do whatever it took to bring that baby mule up in a good home and the right way. And he convinced old chicken that he'd be careful with that mule egg. So they went out to the barn and friends, there it was. There was a, there was a little hole in the roof and the sun was shining in that little hole. It was kind of like a spotlight right on that, right on that mule egg sitting up in that straw. And that Benton's feller's eyes like the bug out of his head. He give Chicken a $20 bill and he, he grabbed that mule leg up to his bosom and he was cuddling it and he was humming to it. rock a baby mine, little mule. And he was carrying that mule leg and he went back out to the front. And you had to cross this kind of a little rickety footbridge to get over the ditch back out to his truck. And that Benton fella tripped. And that mule egg just made the most beautiful arc you ever seen and splattered right in that ditch, just <laughs> blew itself all to pieces, and it landed 
about six inches from a swamp rabbit. And that rabbit come up out of that ditch and went across that road about 90 miles an hour. And that Benton fellow was laying there on the ground. And he kind of rolled over on his back and he looked up at Chicken. And Chicken was standing there looking at him, shaking his head. And that Benton fellow had tears in his eyes. And he said, Mr. Watson, he said, I'm so sorry. Said, I'd have done anything to bring that baby mule up the right way. But I'll tell you one thing. Said, as fast as he runs, I couldn't have kept up behind him with no plow anyway. (laughs) 